My name is Aisha Ibrahim and this is Election Brief. Within the thir next 30 minutes, we have the latest update from the political scene. We are live on DSTV Channel 421, GoTV Channel 125 and all social media handles and around the world at myjohnline.com. Election Headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity and Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, SEMA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, Election Headquarters for an informed electorate. Please do stay for details. President of Imani Center for Education and Energy Policy, Franklin Kujo, has called on Parliament and the Finance Ministry to be careful with EC spending plans for the 2024 elections. His call comes after the EC indicated it has lost four laptops. Franklin Kujo is questioning why the EC did not report the missing equipment to the police until an innocuous question at the parliamentary hearing revealed this fiction, Franklin Kujo says, it suspects the move by the EC is a decoy to declare the remaining machines at the EC compromise and set a procurement opportunity to waste money the country doesn't have to purchase new machines. Well, I've been joined by Franklin Kujo, who is president of Imani Center for Education and Energy Policy, for a conversation on this. Grateful for your time, sir. But first, what has necessitated your call for Parliament and the Ministry of Finance to be vigilant of the EC spending for election 2024? Well, good afternoon, Aisha. First of all, our name is uh, Imani Center for Policy and Education, um, the do Energy, that's ASAP, our cousins as well. Um, well, look, uh, it may sound outlandish for people who may not be new to the methods of these current EC people, right? Don't forget, these are the guys who out of the blue, clandestinely uh, took uh, my whole constituency. You remember the South, Central Kofi, Akwafu, the Lobby areas, just a, a day before the election, for the night before the election, December 7, 2020, the youngest of the, 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 of the face of this earth, we, um, we never took part in the elections, and up to today, they've never said any official apology, right? They've never done that. Right, Franklin Kujo is president of Imani Center for Policy and Education. Um, right, so he's back on. Go ahead. As I was saying, before the main election itself, we had issues with the way they were going to procure the new machines. You recall we found out quite clearly that government, or that Ghana government had been investing in pre-existing biometric machines and we had invested up to $60 million worth of Ghana's money in upgrading those machines, which were used to run the 2019 district elections and the 2016 elections perfectly, right? So we're upgrading. And we told them there was no need to spend close to $100 million in purchasing new machines. But they went ahead, rigged the procurement processes, and eventually went and bought those machines. Today, as we speak, the IMF has confirmed that the election spending was one of the reasons why the economy became the way it has become. So we want to prevent these EC people from coming up with phony ideas and uh, what I call, uh, you know, smuggle ideas. And before you realize uh, they are bringing us a bill, we have to pay for, for some new equipment. And it, I don't trust them one bit. I don't believe those equipment are ever lost. And if they were, if they indeed were lost, they would have been the first people to actually announce it or make, make official complaints. They claim their processes are watertight. They claim their security is watertight, and that it couldn't, they could easily, they couldn't have been easily breached. And how come these machines were missing? Now they are telling us it's laptops. First, they said those biometric verification machines. In any case, the laptops are part of the biometric system anyway, so they cannot be, you know, confusing themselves and confusing the public. So it's just a warning to the to Parliament and to the Minister of Finance. First, for the money is not even going to be not going to be there. To, to, to for this outland, outlandish, uh, should I call purchases. 
So that's the that's the that's the warning I'm actually giving to uh, Ghana's parliament and the finance ministry. Because I, I these guys you can you can't put it past them at all. We've seen it before. And then those laptops do not contain any sensitive information. I mean, does this not change your stance? Uh, you still don't believe that uh, th there's nothing to worry about? Look, the laptops are part of a system. They cannot be telling you the things they are telling you. You know, anytime these so-called commissioners co communicate, they, they, they are so incoherent and they don't even make any sense. You claim that the, the the laptops are not; they are just they are just standalone laptops. How do you capture those images? How do you store the, that information, right? And if they were missing, did you report it to the police? How come you only reported it at a at a very you know at a parliamentary uh, inquiry meeting, which which was not even for the public, right? We we'll never have known. All I'm telling you is that these guys have a way of trying to set up the task system, and because elections are crucial issues. Before I realize, everybody is saying, oh, let's give the money to them. And they'll waste it, apart from procuring two rigged, rigged methods as well. You forgot what they did the last election. They rigged the entire procurement process. And they know we are telling the truth. But we found out quite clearly that they rigged the entire process. Where they, I think they, what, what did they even do? I remember 86 plus 13, they said it was 103 or something like that. One of the, 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 the results that they came out with during the procurement, so the procurement process. You know, so look, let's stop these guys from purchasing new machines. I'm telling you, it's a decoy. It's, it's, it's a decoy. And if you don't stop them in their tracks right now, they'll come up with another outlandish claim that, oh, the machines need to be upgraded. Before you see, they are giving us a bill to pay. We right. don't want to get... get yeah. go, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Kujo. We don't want to. You see, the economy is already in trouble. We don't want any institution to come up, hold us uh, hostage, and make it sound as though elections are so crucial, we, will go, we are going to waste money. Look at how much the money they wasted in this so-called regional coalition centers. In Jafarijan, claiming those things were needless and useless, right? So let's watch their bill carefully. In fact, every bill they bring, we have to scrutinize it to the latter. This time, no room for wastage by any public institution. Sometimes we say politicians are, 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 are actually, uh, how do you call it, uh, destroying the country by coming out with phony projects. But some of these bureaucrats are worse. Worse. Right? How, uh, so I don't put. How, how does Imani Ghana intend to ensure the uh, parliament and the Ministry of Finance uh, These guys check EC spending so that they spend prudently towards the 2024 elections? Sorry, I missed the last question. Sorry. I'm asking what the role of Imani Ghana is in ensuring that parliament and the Ministry of uh, Finance. Uh, 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 make sure that the EC spends prudently towards the 2024 elections. We would work, we would work with them to ensure that the budget they bring to Parliament will scrutinize every bit of it, every, every line item will be scrutinized and match against competitive prices. We have to do that carefully. Otherwise, these guys will hold us ransom and come up with outlandish bills, right? That's what I'm saying. You know, they claimed during the presser yesterday that, oh, they didn't spend $150 million, as I was saying. If they only spent $139 million. They don't even understand arithmetic. If you threw away perfectly working biometric machines, costing, which we've invested $60 million into, and went and procured another one for almost $70 million, and spent another money for running the elections and the register, that comes to about $199 million. I even underestimated the figure. I'm telling you, these guys are not smarter than anybody at all, and we should never allow them to hold the country hostage by claiming that elections are going to be a night, uh, how do you call it, uh, very close, and it's going to be tens tensing based. So we have to we have to make sure it is uh, foolproof. They should first of all tell us how these so-called laptops got missing, how many actually got missing, and how they got missing. If they have all these CCTVs, we should see exactly who took them. Or, you know, they could even engineer these kinds of things. I don't trust these guys for so one bit. <laughs> because of what they did to my people at South. You know, I'm Aisha, you think, you think it is serious? You think that this country would have, uh, would have been at peace if it was one of, a very, one of those contentious constituencies that for four years we didn't have representation? The road from Hawaii to my hometown is about three or four kilometers. They are, just, they are like gullies. Nobody seems to have bothered our livelihoods at all. Yeah, I'm shouting and help, helping this country have, at least to, 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 to develop.
But my own people have been dis disenfranchised because of a reckless act of some group of people who have never said sorry. The, every constituency should be on the lookout because they could do it to you. They could definitely do it to you. I'm grateful Didn't for they come up recently? Let me make the last point. Didn't right. they come, re come up recently with uh, claims that they want to end the post at 3 p.m. and that they will not use indelible ink? All of a sudden, they conjure very funny and silly things and then when you confront them, they say, okay, now we agree. Well, it doesn't make you any reasonable. Well, that Thank has you. well that has been dropped. The EC says it's not going to go on that tangent. But that's the I, point I, I'm making. That, that's the exact point I'm making, Aisha. <laughs> so they come up with outlandish claims, things that don't make sense. They pull it out of thin air, no signs backing it. How do you even say you want to close post at 3 p.m.? And then you say you don't want to use deliberate ink. When you know that there's, there could be doom so there could be all kinds of things that could affect I mean, these guys are not mission creep ready at all. This is, they look at what they did with the last district election, right? All kinds. They waited until last minute. That's when they realized that the, 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 the ballot papers were not printed. I mean, who organizes elections like this? They are the uh, worst you've seen ever. I mean, military era like uh, this would have been done. I'm grateful for your time. Franklin Kuzo is president of Imani. Uh, Center for Policy and Education. Now, founder and leader of the Movement for Change, Alan Kwejo Tremantin, is promoting what he describes as a retail market infrastructure across the country to improve the working environment of Ghanaian traders. He's also promising to establish the Traders Bank that will give soft loans to support traders and boost their living conditions. The Eastern Regional Market Tour gives Alan Tremantin the opportunity to interact with market women in seven major markets in the region, including in Sawem, Adriso, Asamanke, Sekade, Akwetia, Suhum, and Koforidia. He first stopped at the Nsawam market where he was met by some enthusiastic traders. Mr. Tremantin says his retail market infrastructure will take traders off the roadside to a more conducive marketplace to minimize the risk. A trader at Nsawam, Madame Mausi Kumaku, expressed optimism in Mr. Tremantin's ability to transform the country into prosperity. She's been speaking to my colleague Maxwell Kodeko. The New Patriotic Party says it is poised to increase its electoral fortunes in the Volta region in the upcoming December 7 elections. The Volta regional MPP chairman, Makafu Iwanya, who brought this to light, says a well-thought-through strategy has been formulated and would be expediently implemented to help the governing party break the eight. He was speaking at the inauguration of the Volta regional campaign team in Ho. The New Patriotic Party in the 2020 general elections made significant inroads in the Volta region, identified as the stronghold of its opening. Addressing party faithful at the inauguration of the Volta Regional Campaign Team in Hu, the Volta Regional NPP Chairman, Makafiwanya, stressed the party would build on its gains. On this occasion, I want to inform the flag bearer of our party and the national campaign team that in Volta is fully prepared. And upbeat about our prospect in 2024. And as usual, Volta will contribute its quota to our national effort to break the eight. Come December 7th this year. My only concern the timely delivery and proper channeling of campaign logistics. 
and we shall deliver our part of the bargain. The NPP national organizer, Henry Nanabuachi, urged the campaign team not to relent in their efforts in contributing to breaking the aid. In voter region, for instance, we are particularly impressed about your performance at last election. Yeah. Not only for the first time did we have a seat in voter region, but even in terms of the votes for the presidential, we moved up. And it was a massive jump. So it is our expectation that the energy in the region, the cohesion in the region, the unity in the region, the hard work in the region would continue so that we we'll even see a much more appreciation of our votes and then also again build on what we have done again to even get more seats in the voter region. This is a region where the NDC are banging their hopes in terms of their votes. So it is important that we also work very hard to get more votes in order to suppress their votes. The Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Achibod Yaolecha, entreated faithful to prioritize the interest of the party heading into the elections. From now to the 7th of December, it's not about you or I. It is not. We don't matter anymore. What matters is Dr. Baumia becoming president. So let us come together in unity and work together so that we fulfill the agenda of our president. Our president wants to hand over. It is his greatest desire that on 7 January 2025, you hand over the authority of state to Dr. Mahamad Baumia. Mr. Makafi Kofiwanya leads a 39-member campaign team in the Volta region deputized by Dr. Archibald Lecher with the Volta Regional NPP Secretary, Pope Yaoyevu, being the secretary to the team. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News. Who Meanwhile, flag bearer of the governing NPP, Dr. Mama Dubaomir, has made a strong case about his credentials, insisting he is the best vice President Ghana has ever had. According to Dr. Baomir, is a problem solver, the reason he has always been intentional about his policies and vision for the country. He made these comments during his bold solutions for the future engagement with the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So I looked at all these problems. I'm a problem solver, and I have introduced solutions. We have not yet done it all, but we are starting. If you are looking for a problem solver to be president of the republic, then I am the one that you should look at. I have a very solid track record in terms of what I've done as vice president. Remember, I've not yet been president. I don't have that authority. But I am vice president. And I, if you look at my track record as vice president, most people say that I am probably the best vice president in this country's history because of my track record. So I believe that I have not been, if you give me, because I try to do things because my mindset is one of possibilities. I am never afraid to take on new and daunting challenges. I, if I see that a country has this, I ask why can't Ghana also have that? Well, I've been joined by Miracle Sabuaje, who is Communications Director of the NPP campaign team for a conversation. I'm grateful for your time, uh, Miracle Sabuaje. Why should I believe the flag bearer if he says he's the best vice president Ghana has ever had? Well, I believe that at every point in time in any country's um, life, the, there's a need for uh, somebody who would understand what the issues are and um, make a proposition for what he believes the solutions are as well. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has proven that as vice president, undoubtedly without any dispute, 
He's one of the best performing vice presidents this country has ever had. And I'm here to hear anybody make any argument whatsoever against that in terms of his level of um, commitment towards the focus, focus area that he, he has been working on. He, the, the point is that he is one vice president that has identified consistently specific areas of difficulties and challenges and has led or driven um, solutions to be to be put to them. His level of credibility, integrity is, is not in doubt. And the point at where we are as a country, what is most required is a leader with a very high level of credibility and integrity because um, across the world, every country is working hard to get themselves out of the setback that we encountered between 2020 till now, where we experienced um, a pandemic that has not been seen you know, by a hundred years. And so um, if that is a point in which we are, then you want to count on a president who has a very high level of credibility, high level of integrity, a commitment to harness every single talent that is available um, for the country. And uh, these are attributed the vice president clearly, without doubt, without any dispute, um, have. What was the objective of this key stakeholder engagement by the flag bearer? Well, on the on the seventh of February, um, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya made a, a maiden statement or a speech uh, where he outlined seventy key policies premised on twenty pillars. Um, we we're currently putting together our manifesto across uh, the various sectors. Basically, what the vice president is saying is that in the past seven years, working with you as stakeholders, these are some of the issues that we we identify that remain outstanding, and I'm of the view that for each of these sectors. These are solutions that going into the future we would have to put um, put up. However, that having been said, he's coming to them to recalibrate, look at what it is that he has put out there and see whether it still aligns with these stakeholders. Are there inputs they want to make? Are there feedback they want to share? Are there areas they believe he needs to refine based on which we can all together say that, listen, this is our solution for for this sector going going into the future. So yesterday he met the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, where the conversation was quite clear how to stimulate the private sector going forward. And the vice president message is simple. In the past seven years, he, he's been doing a lot when it comes to um, looking at the foundation of our of our of our of our, um, of our society across sectors. Um, several things have been done in ensuring that. Ghana is able to get to a certain point where we would say that, listen, we are getting our foundations right. We are not there yet, but they believe that going into 2025, there are areas that we need to begin to shift our attention towards, and that would have to do with how to engineer private sector to strongly participate in our developmental drive. And so he speaks of getting private sector involved in um, the provision of public infrastructure, which is one of the things that he believes strongly would um, speed up our, our public infrastructure development drive, which is true. I mean, if you can get private sector to participate in, in the development of some of these public infrastructure, and, and we should be sure that some of the infrastructure infrastructure gap we have could be could be closed faster than 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 we have it. You also mentioned the tax amnesty for 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 businesses and individuals. And and um if you were there and you saw the video, I could actually share the video with you you would see the applause that came with the tax amnesty um, announcement or proposition. And rightly so, because come to think of it, there are businesses who today are not contributing towards our revenue generation drive simply because they have certain legacy debts in terms of taxes that they are afraid to even show up to pay their current taxes because they believe that that could come up. The vice president feels that we are at a point where we can begin to widen our tax nets based on all the um, initiatives we put in place in the past um, seven years, especially on, on, on the part of the national identification system where now we've been able to integrate and synchronize the systems. And so if you have a citizen who is born um, at birth having a national identification number today, and you have citizens who have national identification numbers that are linked to their bank accounts, to, uh, linked to their electronic wallets, linked to their business registrations, linked to their tax identification numbers, linked to their pensions, then clearly we would say that we've done some very progressive work in the past seven years, and we should be ready to be able to embrace the idea of widening the tax net, which obviously, once it's successful, 
would lead to the reduction of the tax burden on the individual. Because if you have 10 people contributing uh, revenue to feed 20 people, obviously these 10 people would pay more. All right. Grateful for your time. Then is Miracle Abuaje is Communications Director for the NPP campaign team. Let's get to voters at the Kajetia Duba in the Ashanti region who have shared what will influence their votes and choice of candidate going into the December 7 general election. In today's edition of Voters Voice, here is what the electorates from Kajetia Dubai have had to say. Because NDC Basa, MPP Basa, Osaba may away, may away, may away, Omina Ba, Munia Baku, Roma be discount, I come in Quandia Caba crying chum, more beyond two aba, because you are two out, Tima Mamma, you say, and the MPP and this you, Obia Ba and Adan, you are Troqua, you would you be a Yamaye, Tiaquid, your mamma, Tia Wamway. A time at a time, or a cat, a Santa Radio, only a one term premium insurance. On the Gunu Maye, I'm why this year, so I could do my match here for education or Tabitrum or so the Shem Kinato or Bobitrum. Twenty twenty four, never met to Albany say, um, your purchases or my name, and see, say, Obet Maman Kosobana, Yenya more industries, our cream war, Namo Biahu and Ha. I think they are the best. And to whether MPP and this you, the member to Albany say, Young Coswell, industries will crown me brain, Nemo Obia Huanaha, and Rantia. Fredication into a best Ama Matuaba. San said, Fredication, young for so be blair free so. Eighty media, Baumia, the mess out of my barman. You may party and men conco to a baby, or Mummy and Nina, or Moya do Coro, or Moba, or Munim Busia, and Yaya Wabon turns for four. The media made a better. NDC ba me ana me ble NPP ba me ana me ble omudu amusika ye nyina ye sika no omudu enso mu fi yen nti me pa de me kwakopa adwuma mo bi pa de me de beda ana asa me de beba adwuma bepe sika de ahwe me ma digitalization so nti ti mi nsa ba omia so ba de a ana me de geta nti ania ma bebere be kwaso amaye ko ko yi sika ba ana akra na o fon so ko atimi health insurance bi bi atimi ona fon so ti digitalization ana na ba bo aye ti mi nsa no because I was a ma nana adodan kwa no ma nyuma pa obeye no na ba omia ti ni to aso ensa ma mu ba omia eno ma woni tirim ni tirim boss ne tu ya ho no eno ma wo mu yie oba gana fo ye ho meto ye on my penny, Mahama, said respect, the respect my dad and can say or back with Not a respect and all your bunno. Now what tell us in the way I call you a foot to honor, not more be a day. It is an anyone who must about me or her. Ah, they cock up any deba. I dear back. And to me, dear, me quamma, you know, me to me, you know, be agony. I was saying, you know, I had time. And as I wrap up voters' uh, voice and end an election brief on your election headquarters. Election headquarters is for uninformed electorates. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.